The second episode of The Last of Us has recently been released and it developed on from the world, the characters, and the infection that we got introduced to in episode 1. Following the quest to get Ellie to the Fireflies outside of the Federal Run State in exchange for Joel and Tess to get the battery for their vehicle, this episode showed us that this show is going to be anything but plain sailing and that the journey that they're going to go on is going to have deadly consequences. So with that, I thought I'd recap break down, and explain all that there was to take away from this week's episode. So let's get into it. Here is The Last of Us Episode 2 Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. Episode 2 of the show was titled Infected, and it's safe to say that it certainly lived up to its name, showing us clickers that were thriving in the abandoned city, providing information on how connected they all are to each other due to the ecosystem that binds them all together, and also showing us our first protagonist falling victim to the infection that wiped out most of the civilization allowed there to be an emotional and bleak ending to an episode which felt like Joel and Ellie only made it out by the skin of their teeth. I'm going to break this video down by the ending for each of the main characters, but first let's discuss the opening scene. The first scene in this episode took place in Jakarta, Indonesia, on the 24th of September, which was two days before when we saw the events taking place with Joel and Sarah in episode 1 of the show where the outbreak happened in the States. We saw that the infection broke out in a flour and grain factory on the west side of the city, and with the factory most likely producing products for distribution around the globe, that was most likely the reasoning behind why it hit the States so quickly after. We saw that it actually happened 30 hours before the 24th of September, so with the infection usually taking a matter of hours to occur, it would make logical sense for that to be the birthplace of the cordyceps infection that went on to become a global pandemic and wipe out a lot of the population. We also had what we saw in episode 1 being reiterated to us in the opening scene, where we saw that the doctor stated how there wasn't a medicine or a vaccine that could be created in order to stop this, so the best thing to do to contain the infection and to stop it from spreading worldwide was to destroy the city. However, it was already too late by that point. This moment also once again highlighted to us how important Ellie is in the show and the value that she holds in being able to quite literally save the world from the darkness that it's currently in. Joel Joel was relatively quiet throughout this episode, but I feel that was mainly down to the skepticism that he had over the legitimacy of Ellie being able to be immune from the infection. We saw that he was leading the way to the Fireflies where he hoped to be able to get the battery for his vehicle as he wanted to go on and search for his brother Tommy. Tess was the individual that was making Joel see sense throughout the most part of the episode due to the fact that he wanted to turn back because he felt as though Ellie could turn at any moment and put them both in danger. However, we saw that she didn't. We saw just how brave of a character Joel is in this episode and the care that he has for the people that he was with due to the fact that he was facing the clickers head on and was prepared to be on the front line in order to keep them safe, even caring for Ellie, which was a big change for the character. We saw that the killing of the guard was something that was playing on Joel's mind from episode 1 and even the killing of the infected at points due to the question that Ellie asked when she asked if he ever thought about them being human at one point. It made you realize that he does it in order to survive and you can tell that he takes no pleasure in doing so. Joel and Tess had a history together and when we saw Joel find out that Tess was bitten when they encountered a clicker inside of the museum, we saw his whole demeanor change. He didn't seem too upset like we saw when Sarah was killed, but I imagine 20 years of fighting and trying to survive has hardened him up and he's most probably far less emotional than what he once was. With him running off with Ellie at the end, we saw that he was going to head off to Frank and Bill who we saw in the trailer last week, where it seems as though he's going to need to convince them of Ellie's immunity and hope that they'll be able to help him further down the line. There was a brief moment where we saw Joel look at his watch that Sarah got mended for him 20 years ago in this episode. So it showed that even now she was still on his mind and I imagine stepping into the free world and being alongside Ellie, a 14 year old, somebody who was of a similar age to what Sarah was when she was killed, brought back something in his mind. I imagine he'll want to protect her and not fail her. Joel was our educator in this episode along with Tess and we learned a lot about the infection through him educating Ellie. Ellie This episode, like the first, allowed us to see more of Ellie's sharp personality that she's known for. We didn't learn much about the character's backstory, but we saw her start to bond with Joel and Tess, more so with Tess, 
which I think was the main reason as to why we saw that she reacted the way that she did when Tess was left at the end, fighting and screaming. Ellie was bitten during the encounter in the museum, just like Tess was, but we saw the speed in which her body could fight off the infection. In the short amount of time that followed, we saw that it had taken a hold of Tess quite badly, but Ellie had healed tremendously fast. This episode showed us that despite the sharp tongue and confident attitude that Ellie embodied, she's just a kid and doesn't know much about the dangers that lie ahead. She was fearful, wasn't able to fend for herself, and would have definitely died if Joel wasn't there, and I think she actually appreciated that. She was amazed by the world that she was looking at, a world that once was that she was never raised in. We saw that she was 14, so that confirmed to us that she knew nothing of the world that was before, where the infection wasn't present. With the final shot of her looking at Joel as he walked off, we saw that she emitted a sigh, which was almost like reality hitting and her coming to the realization that things are most probably only going to get worse, more danger-filled, and that there's a full-on journey ahead. Tess. Tess was the character that provided the level-headedness in this episode. She trusted Ellie, and she trusted that she was the thing that could save the state of the world. Tess was giving out advice to Ellie throughout the entirety of the episode, showing that she did have a caring side to her, despite coming across as tough. During the scene where they were inside of the museum, we saw that she was bitten by a clicker and that the infection had spread rapidly around her body. This led her in her final moments to persuade Joel to get Ellie to Bill and Frank, after it was revealed to us that all of the fireflies had been killed, so there was no way of getting the battery in exchange. This then led Tess to sacrifice herself in order to buy Joel and Ellie time to escape. There was a real haunting scene which had one of the runners getting close up and personal to Tess where the fungi was moving all around its mouth. It showed just how disgusting it was and that Tess didn't want to become what was right in front of her very eyes. She wanted to die the way that she remembered herself, and that did happen as the building went up in flames, buying Joel and Ellie the valuable time that they needed. I thought this episode was a good one. It wasn't as long as the first episode, and it didn't need to be. It felt like an educational episode where we learned about the origin of the infection, how it's all connected throughout the city, and how one wrong move could cause a chain reaction which could expose the location. We were introduced to a few different types of the stages of the individuals once being bitten, we said farewell to a character that brought out the good in Joel, and we also got to see the importance that Ellie held and why the journey we're watching unfold is worth the risk. Infected was the perfect title for this episode as it was solely based around the infection. The real journey has only just begun. It was dangerous enough just being over the wall and being in the city, so now that we're embarking on a cross-country trip, I feel it's only going to get worse and far more dangerous. So, there you have it. The Last of Us Episode 2 Ending Explained If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of this episode? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.